Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to round 6 of the F1 1999 career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Canadian Grand Prix and we ran into a problem. Yes, for anyone that watched Monaco last time, go back, check it out. It was a good race. Um, you, you may have heard obviously at the end of that video that we ran into a little bit of a problem um, where the, the AI was just doing laps around the circuit and I couldn't end the Monaco Grand Prix. Um, I completely lost that save. It just would not find it again. Um, which means we, we've had to do a little bit of a reset with this series. And that has come with its own separate issue. Um, basically, uh, from reading around and things like that, you can occasionally run into some problems with the mod. Um, so what we've had to do, uh, is completely reset the championship standings, uh, and everything like that. And unfortunately, that has also reset the drivers as well. So everyone now, uh, is exactly where you would expect them to be. Ready for 1999? Um, Carlos Sainz occasionally uh, is going to show up as well. So, unfortunately, that obviously meant for us we had like a good 16-point lead in the Drivers' Championship. That has been evaporated. Um, and we are basically having to start over ready for the rest of the season. I have kept the Canada pretty much the same. Uh, we, we dropped Russia or Hockenheim uh, from it just because that was the one track that we might have some issues with. Uh, so, unfortunately, it kind of means that there's been a bit of a reset uh, ready with 10 rounds to go of the season. So... I'm not particularly happy with that. Obviously, I can understand as well for you guys. It is a huge, huge shame. But hopefully, uh, the show will continue to go on. But yeah, obviously, if you're new around here, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. We're trying to hit 130k uh, at the moment. But yeah, a huge, huge shame. Um, but we can only put our best foot forward. Effectively, it's given everyone else a chance to try and beat me now in the championship. I might keep trying to keep like a points table down in the comments below. Um, but obviously, it's going to be a little bit weird now. Now, uh, because, you know, for example, Eddie Irvine is back um, and that kind of thing. But like I said, yeah, the, the show must go on. Uh, so we will return this weekend here for the Canadian Grand Prix. While returning then to this series in a very, very soggy Montreal for, I believe, the second year in a row. A really, really good qualifying effort last weekend in Monaco. And that is very, very slidey down in towards someone there. We'll just about drift the car in to the first apex but yeah how will we get on here um on our return of course i've had to try and reset up my wheel settings and everything like that as well when i say we lost everything i mean literally everything in this game there is heinz alfredson um suddenly looking very very racy in his williams car see if we'd expect a little bit of a mix-up here in montreal of all places especially in the changeable conditions will favour those cars and that are very, very quick. Whoa, down the streets, this huge sideways moment by the end of Sector 2. Come on, just keep it fairly tidy there as Michael Schumacher now will go fastest. I've just realised everyone else is on a set of the wets. We're running on the intermediates then, so maybe we are at a little bit of a disadvantage here, but we seem to be fairly competent uh, up to this point. As trying to put the power down out into the back straight, though definitely losing a lot of speed in the traction zones. There is Schumacher romping away down in towards that final corner. Just the wall of champions came to try and navigate them, running in a little bit deep on the entry and trying to put the power down on the exit. It is going to be P11 on the grid here for the Canadian Grand Prix. Well, there we go there. Michael Schumacher takes pole position. Ferrari, the only team opting for the wet tyres there in qualifying, and it's really worked for them. A front row lockout as Mika Hakkinen lines up P3 ahead of the Williams of Heinz Howard Fritz in there. Barrichello ahead of Juan Pablo Montoya now in the Sauber car. Uh, so there have clearly still been some movement going on in this series as well then. But yeah, 11th and 10th then for the two Jordans as we've now got Ralph Schumacher as my teammate. Uh, Pedro De La Rosa, Mika Salo at the back of the field. So there's clearly still been quite a lot of mix-up. Um, but yeah, we are starting outside of the points ready 
for the Canadian Grand Prix. Quickly though, before we get into this video, I want to thank all of the names you see on your screen. Without their continued support of the channel, none of the work we do here would be possible. And if you want to get your name featured on this list, you can click the join button or click the Patreon link down in my description below and support the channel from just £1 a month. You will also get access to weekly updates about everything going on behind the scenes and also occasionally some early pre reviews on videos so yeah a massive thank you to my youtube members and my patreon supporters and let's get back to the video No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal. And it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. If you want flat out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7 mile circuit peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline, and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. Here we are then, Formula One in 2020. The fight for the World Championship all starts here today. Mercedes on the hunt for a seventh consecutive title. They'll have Ferrari and Red Bull to contend with along the way. Williams struggled to find their feet last year. They'll be hoping for a stronger start this time around. And what I wonder of the Renault-powered cars. Will they be able to step forward, maybe even onto the podium on a regular basis? Plenty to discuss then with Anthony Davidson. He's out of hibernation too, and alongside me in the commentary box once again. It's good to be back, Crofty. Let's hope for some good racing today. We can't know at this point how competitive these teams are relative to each other, but hopefully nobody is able to run and hide. We want to see these drivers pushing to the limit all the way to the chequered flag. Well, here we are then lining up on the grid, ready for the Canadian Grand Prix. Round six of the season here, and it is going to hopefully just be a fairly simple one-stop. Uh, doesn't look like there's any threat of rain either, which is very, very ideal for us. Uh, but we just want to try and get back into this thing then. Lining up, as you can see there, my, uh, sorry, Ralph Schumacher alongside me, five red lights. And it is going to be lights out, and away we go. Just trying to put the power down. We've immediately got Giancarlo Fisichella trying to look past me. Is the other Benetton car there of Alexander Wurtz has a look down the inside at the first corner. Oh, a lot of chopping and changing here on lap one as Ralph Schumacher there gets a little bit untidy. We'll go around the outside of our teammate then. So Alex Wurtz, the big winner in all of this, is immediately struggling. Actually, with a little bit of rear locking. So we're going to try and move the brake bias around just a little bit at the start of this Grand Prix. I have found it very, very difficult to try and get the car dialed in around this Montreal circuit this weekend. I feel like it's ultimately um, why we have lacked a little bit of pace in the car. So one of the things, unfortunately, that we couldn't factor in was within this mod, there is actually a little bit of performance tweaking between each season, between each of the cars there is what on earth is going on here out of the final corner. So it does actually mean that the order um, well, is slightly changed up as well uh, ready for this weekend. So some of the teams now have got slightly better cars. Some of them are slightly weaker and I feel like our Jordan has absolutely been one uh, that has been a little bit uh, kind of tripped over by the new performance there as we are really really struggling on the tyres early on we're just locking up absolutely everywhere here of course we also don't know what that'll do when we end up with some regulation changes further on down the line uh, but yeah our fast start to the year with Jordan like already just be starting to crumble a bit like Heinz Harolds did in the real life season as well when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone on the outside of Alexander Wurtz as we're trying to get around Kevin, uh, sorry, Jan Magnussen even as well, I should say. Make our way up the hill though. Whoa, big drift as we try and go around the outside of Alexander and we are finally back into the points. 
Oh, here we go. Jan Magnussen to the outside of Jean Alesi. Nope, not going to make that happen. And look at the speed we've got. Right on the outside of not one, but maybe two cars down in towards the final chicane. Alesi says, no, I'm going to have a little bit of contact there with Magnussen, who might now be out of the Grand Prix. No, we've got away with that. So clearly, the team, the car there, getting a little bit lucky to escape damage. But we are up to ninth. We're getting a nice run on Alesi at the final corner. We have definitely got a lot of straight line speed over uh, some of the AI. So this Jordan still a little bit of a weapon there in a straight line, which is good to see. Up into P8 we go. There's Jacques Villeneuve, Rubens Barrichello then. Villeneuve, I've given him so much stick early on this season. He's been given a lifeline uh, to go back into an improved Williams team. Uh, but Rubens Barrichello, that Stewart car still looks racy. I tell you what, when we're right in some clear air and the AI battling each other, our pace here actually looking very, very racy still. We've taken about three seconds. Whoa. Uh, Barrichello in recent laps and Jacques Villeneuve, that gap is coming down as well. So I think actually it was more the Jordan struggled in the rain. We did set up the car exclusively for race pace. This thing has still certainly got enough to fight. Okay, so clearly tyre wear is still pretty good then. Team want me to go a little bit further into the Grand Prix um, than they'd originally anticipated. I'll be honest though, I'm pretty sure we want to change it up too much unless we could go the other way onto a set of the softs. Tyre wear, yeah, is always very, very low in these classic cars. Uh, and yes, I'm going to take some curb through the chicane uh, because this is the late 90s and track limits weren't so enforced. Well, I feel like, yeah, with that mixed up grid after qualifying, it has kind of meant that with how difficult it can still be to overtake in these cars, um, that everyone is slowly figuring themselves out. Schumacher's now up to P10 um, behind Alexander Wurtz, um, but they're still losing a bit of time. So I reckon, yeah, if Schumacher can get around Wurtz, then he's probably actually going to be quite quick. Um, but it, it still feels like a bit of a step into the unknown halfway through the season. Oh, this is what we want to see. Barrichello trying to have a look around the outside of Jacques Villeneuve in towards that final chicane. Are we going to see them slow each other up or are we potentially going to be able to get a look in? No, Barrichello, very, very well composed there. Just backside of it on the outside. He makes Villeneuve's life difficult, though. Oh, and immediately Villeneuve will feel that pressure and will let Rubens by. So we make our way back through turn one and turn two. We are now all over the gearbox. Oh, Jacques Villeneuve again, a little bit of a wobble out of the final corner. And now that Williams is going to be very, very vulnerable. We'll get to the inside, ready for turn one. Slide it into the apex, and finally then, we've made another place up in this Grand Prix. Barrichello and Frentzen okay, are the one. next Great two. Pass. And after that, I feel like, yeah, the Ferrari and McLaren dynasty might well be back at the front of the field. Well, the VSC's out then. Someone towards the rear of the field has gone. Well, here we go then, riding on board with one of the BARs. It's going to get way too hot into the braking zone of Turn 1. Somehow, they're pretty much going to get unscathed from that incident, but one of the Menardis has been deleted. Riding on board, yeah, look at this from the Menardis POV. Just coming his way into the corner, rear wheel gets taken out, and the dream is gone. Oh, we've got a really good run on Barrichello. Okay, the incident has been cleared. Let's get back up to racing speed. Just have... Our engineer, Jeff, going on about how the VSC works still. Funnily enough, I know that. Um, but yeah, we almost got the run on Barrichello then, down in towards the final corner. I think we've got some fight. And Schumacher now has found his way around Alexander Wurtz, so I'll be intrigued to see what his pace is like. Oh, we've lost another one. Who's now is gone? This time round, it is one of those Benettons then, seemingly breaking down on the run back in towards Turn 1. And yep, that is a big, big shame for them. Just seem to have the grip out of the final corner every time against the AI. This time round to the outside of Rubens Barrichello. Haven't tried to make any moves like this so far today. But through we will go and up into P6 then. Looks like McLaren and Ferrari, they're back to kind of the pace we would expect to see from them. At the front of the field, cool bar 20 seconds up the road. So I think all we might be able to get here is going to end up being Frentzen. Hacken and then the first of our front runners to pit. And I mean, yeah, he's already come out ahead of me. I mean, this is absolutely a track where you would expect Ferrari and McLaren to be fast. We've seen the way um, they pull away out of the corners. And of course, 
basically all of this track is acceleration zones, so hopefully that's not going to be indicative of the pace for the rest of the season. I'm hoping there should still be weekends where we can fight. Um, but yeah, at the moment, we are taking bags of time out of Frentzen. Frentzen into the pit lane. David Coulthard also in. So I don't know if those Ferraris have opted to stay out there. There's Barrichello now as well, peeling in behind me. So we are really trying to extend this stint a little bit longer. As there, I believe, goes Coulthard back out onto the road. So yeah, Ferrari and McLaren, they got a pit stop margin over everyone here. As Rubens as well peels in. Sorry, uh, not Rubens, Ralph even. Well, it has suddenly become very overcast here in Montreal. But, yeah, I don't think we're still going to see any rain before the end of the race. I'm now just kind of circling, to be honest. Uh, the pace still feels good on the mediums. I'm going to dive in, throw caution to the wind, and try and go on a set of softs to the end of the Grand Prix. But I haven't quite decided when. I mean, we're kind of in an odd little spot at the moment where... If we get a safety car, I'll probably end up finishing P5. If we don't get a safety car, I'll probably end up finishing P5. We might still have to overtake Frentzen on the road, though. And yeah, these mediums starting just to give up a little bit. I think, yeah, we'll peel into the pit lane then at the end of lap 20. We actually went purple through sector 1. So I think we're definitely still in a good routine with the car at the moment. But I want to try and utilise those soft tyres to the best of their ability towards the end of the race. Uh, don't think we're going to close in on David Coulthard, to be honest. Um, but I think, yeah, whether we'd had the, you know, the performance that we had pre-weekend, um, you know, we hadn't lost any of that, I don't think it would have made much difference. Um, being honest, I think, yeah, just this is a track that is so Ferrari and McLaren dominated there, as there goes Heinz Howard Frentzen flying past me. So we're still going to have to try and get past him on the road towards the end. Um, but yeah, luckily we don't get undercut by Jacques Villeneuve. What on earth has happened to someone else late on in the day? Oh, one of the BARs. It has all ended for them here. Say, they're just up in a pile of smoke. And yeah, BAR, their tough start here in Canada, has been made even worse. And there you can see Ricardo Rossi. His day has come to an end here in that BAR car. Really has not been the early start to the season they would have wanted. And even despite the reset, still seemingly nowhere for that new Formula 1 team. Yeah, Jacques Villeneuve has really, really dodged a bullet here. But a little over 10 laps to go. We are closing in on Frentzen. Um, but we are still losing time to cool guard up the road. Well, the only thing I hadn't really factored in actually was the fuel usage here. I forgot how much of a thirsty car this Jordan is. We're starting to run a little bit fine towards the end of the race. Never seem to be able to get the power down as we make our way out onto this straight, but we've definitely got the speed over the Williams car, which is not particularly quick in a straight line this season. Fine Tal Frentzen's going to go defensive. So we'll try and have a look to the outside there. Nothing happening into the final chicane. There will we be able to get the power down on the exit, though? Yes, we will. And to the inside of the German as we start lap 25. Give us the best in lap you can. Team, for whatever reason, want us to pit. But we are through and up into P5 then. And to be honest, with 10 laps to go, I think apart from monitoring the fuel, I don't think a lot else is going to happen unless we see a safety car. But with a little over five laps to go then, we are still burning through fuel at a rate that I'm not particularly comfortable with. But yellow flags out for some reason down in the final couple of corners. Okay, clear. Looks like that has sorted itself out, unless we're about to see a car blowing up. Um, but yeah, Ferrari, they're running still two, nearly three seconds a lap faster than me. So it genuinely might be in our best interest here to get lapped intentionally. Uh, so we save an extra lap's worth of fuel before the end. However, I got no idea whether they are quite going to lap us. And I don't trust us to be able to keep Frentzen at bay during that. I was just about to say, yeah, we are losing a lot of time to Frentzen, but I think we've got the fuel to a point in which we're pretty safe to the end. But you can see, that's how close Irvine is behind us. Um, I don't know if Michael Schumacher's ahead of him or not. I think it is Eddie Irvine who is going to win on his return to Formula 1, um, which is rather impressive. I'm hoping, of course, next season uh, things will return to normality once again in this mod. But yeah, has kind of upset the championship fight that we did have going on. Apparently, there's like a whole new version of this mod as well coming out in like two weeks, uh, which I'm very, very excited because apparently it does fix a load of the bugs 
um, that are in this one, including the problem that we ran into. Doesn't look like it was just an issue that I've had um, with the game. So for the 2000 season, uh, we're going to move into that new version of it. And then hopefully, of course, we'll run into much less issues down the line. But of course, yeah, I don't even know uh, when the 2000 F1 season is even going to happen. Because, uh, of course, we'll have F124 long before then. But three laps to go at the Canadian Grand Prix. And now we've got some blue flags. I'll sad to see then the arrows, despite everything that's been altered around. Uh, yeah, I haven't really got a car um, that can fight any more than the other one was able to, unless we were at the wheel of it. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't. I don't think the order has changed around too much either. Um, I think it has just been slightly altered. But Eddie Irvine, a 59 new fast lap of the day as he starts the final lap here. I'm pretty certain it is Irvine that is winning. Um, but yeah, no matter, I think, I don't ever think we would have been a second lap faster had we had our old Jordan car back. So I think, honestly, uh, P5 was all we were ever going to be able to do around at this venue in this game. But yeah, Jos Verstappen next up then. Um, we, I mean, there hasn't been too many driver moves either. A lot of people uh, are still where we were expecting them to be. It's only really uh, Jacques Villeneuve, Eddie Irvine, Ralph Schumacher, and a couple of others that have kind of ended up switching back around. Um, but still, you know, it, it's a little bit of a shame, but we'll be able to continue, still continue uh, building up our storyline in this series. Nonetheless, as we're around the final corners, though, to start the last lap of the Canadian Grand Prix, Eddie Irvine, he took a sabbatical at the start of the year, but he came back to Formula 1 ready for the Canadian Grand Prix and immediately is going to be back on the top step of the podium there. Jos Verstappen finally jumps out of my way, but it is going to be Eddie Irvine that wins on his return to Ferrari this weekend here in Montreal. A fantastic dominant display as Formula 1 is well and truly back there. It is going to be a Ferrari 1-2. Michael Schumacher following his teammate home there with Hakkinen and Coulthard line ending up in P3 and P4 there. So despite a bit of a torrid qualifying for the McLaren boys, they're able to navigate their way through and still pick up the result we were probably expecting from them by the end of this weekend. There, Coulthard nowhere close to Hakkinen at the end of the day. But how many times have we seen that before? in this series then. Mika Salo down in towards the final couple of corners. He's already going to end up uh, one lap down, but is he going to get lapped by myself in P5? I think, yep, there we go. He's just going to let me by as we make our way in towards the final few corners. My championship dreams, they're going to be a lot tougher now, but I'm certainly not going to give up on the hopes either. Out of the final corner, it is P5 here in Montreal. So, another excellent win from Ferrari. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed. It's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. There we go then, Eddie Irvine getting the better of Michael Schumacher despite his German teammate starting from pole position here. And yeah, a long, long way ahead of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard there. We come through for P5 ahead of Frentzen and Barrichello there. So only seven cars ending this one on the lead lap with Schumacher, Villeneuve and Giancarlo Fisichella rounding out our top ten there. You can see the only drivers not to see the flag, Mika Salo, uh, sorry, uh, Ricardo Rossi even, Alexander Wurtz and Marc Genet when all is said and done. Of course, Drivers' Championship say is the same as our race results. Constructors-wise, Ferrari now a long, long way clear of McLaren. But Jordan, we're still in that P3 
which I feel is a pretty sensible goal to aim for by the end of the season. Like I said, though, at the start, a massive apology, of course, the fact that we did run into these issues on the game. But hopefully we can still enjoy the rest of this season. Like I said, starting from 2000, we're going to be on the whole new patch um, that is meant to be coming out for the game as well. So that is going to be very, very exciting in the future. But yeah, make sure you get yourself subscribed if you're new. And we'll be back next week as Formula 1 returns, I believe, ready... I want to save for the French Grand Prix I think we're returning to.